Stacks are an important data structure in computer science that show up in a variety of contexts. The idea of a stack is simple, much like a stack of books. There are three basic operations that a stack must have. The push operation places a new item on top of the stack, covering what was beneath it. The peak operation allows you to look at the item on top of the stack to see what it is without modifying the stack in any way. Now, in this example using books, we're assuming that we can't tell what the books are looking at the values on the spines. Let's say that they're all covered up. So the only way we can know the value, or in this case, say the title of any book, is by looking at the top value, looking at the cover. I'm not allowed to check what that book is or that book is or any of the books below the top book. Lastly, the pop operation removes the item from the top of the stack, thus giving us access to whatever items are beneath it. So why is this useful? The most prominent use of stacks in computer science is for tracking program execution. I have here on the left a simple Java program that I'm running in Eclipse and I'm running it in debugging mode with a breakpoint on every single line of code. That will allow me to step through the execution one line at a time. I'll launch this code, and on the right side, we'll see the debugger tracking which method I'm inside of, but it is also giving us a visualization of the program stack. I am currently on line four of my code, that is a call to the method A within the main method. On the stack, I only have the main method. If I advance one step, then by calling A, I have now gone to line nine, and I'm about to call the method C. But notice that the stack now has main, and then on top of that is the method A. I'll advance again, and now I'm inside the method named C, which will print something to the console. And sure enough, the stack shows that I have main, and then A, and then C. After completing execution of method C, I will begin to unwind the stack and remove elements from it. So one step forward, I print this to the console, colon, 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 space, start, and then return from the C method back into the A method, and the stack now only shows A and main. If I advance now, then I'm inside of method B, which is now on top of the stack. As I step through this method, I reach a call to method C again, and if I advance once again, C is now added on top of the stack. So I have main, A, B, and C, all on my stack. These instances on the program stack are known as activation records, and although we're only seeing the method names, bundled inside of them are information about the values of local variables associated with that particular method. Tracking this information helps Java and most programming languages know which variables are active and also where to return execution to when a given method finishes. Notice that the line numbers are also inside of the stack entries. So when I advance one more step here, the reason that C returns and then goes back into the method A is that A was on top of the stack. I'm about to go into C again, and now I went there from this line, from line 11 in method A, and that is demonstrated here. So the stack is tracking not only the current sequence of active methods, but it's also giving information about where to return when a method completes. I'm going to step through this until the program finishes, and then we'll talk a bit more about stacks. So when that call to A finished, we go back to the main method and we're at B. We advance to B. That's on top of the stack. B calls C 
And so now C is on top of the stack. C finishes, we pop C off, and then also pop uh, B off to go all the way back to main. So notice that two steps were popped off there. That also happened earlier in this execution. And now we are at C. We go to C, which is on top of main in the stack, and then advance one more time, and now the program is finished. So stacks are extremely useful and important in tracking the execution of programs. However, when we use a stack as a data structure, we'll be using it for fairly different purposes. I'll give you some examples of this once we learn how to implement a stack in the next video.